Hello, hello, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be working in our handmade scripture journal. I made this in a previous video, so I'll drop a link for anyone interested in checking it out. So the scripture we're going to be journaling on today is from 2 Corinthians 5, and it reads, We walk by faith, not by sight. Enjoy. Okay, let's jump right into it. I am going to be preparing a piece of collage that I'm going to rip up and use as background for my journal spread. Now this is the second ply of a napkin. I took off and removed the first ply, the top part that had the pretty design on it and I used it in another project. This is the bottom ply that will normally get thrown away in a lot of instances but I'm going to use it in my journal today. I am going over the top of it with some pearl metallic Arteza paints in just some a yellow green and blue shade i i don't have any sort of rhyme or reason to this pattern only it's it's vertical and horizontal uh, paint swashes so once that's done and everything is all dry i'm going to get out my scissors and cut this in half i'm just cutting it to make it more um to make it easier for me to rip it the way that I want to rip it. I'm going to get everything um, all settled here and fold it up and then I'm going to rip this napkin into strips. Now I'm going to use these strips over the top of some stamping in the journal and I'm going to end up doing two layers of these strips. It's just going to create some really great texture and the translucency of the tissue of the napkin paper is going to allow us to still see um, some of the stamping that I'm going to put on the journal pages. So at this point I'm just pulling apart the strips to make sure they don't stick together because I think the paint wasn't 100% dry. And I'm going to get out my checkbook register. Now this is what is inside of the journal that I've been working on for scripture journaling. It's just a regular old checkbook, old school checkbook register, and it doesn't have any art paper, quote unquote. I'm just using the paper that comes in the check register. Now, before I glue on the strips, I'm going to take these really cute Jane Davenport stamps. They're called glances. There are five or six different um, sets of eyes that I'm stamping on the background of the journal spread. Now, because I'm going over the top of this with collage, some of this is really will be covered up ultimately, but it just adds another layer that at the end, you'll be able to see glances <laughs> of the glances you'll be able to see you know an eye here or there through the collaging that I'm going to do over the top of it but I thought these are really cute um way to tie in the reference to um walking by faith not by sight get it you know eyes and sight <laughs> that's a total mom joke but um yeah, so I'm just stamping on with the glances and then I'm pretty sure I'm going to pull out a Tim Holtz script stamp and just fill in some more of the space with some um, just scriptural text. I am using some archival ink in the color watering can and it is necessary to use a permanent ink like archival because we will be going over the top of this with matte gel medium and we don't want the ink to smudge or run. If you use something like Distress, Distress Oxide Ink Pad, something like that will re-wet when you go over the top of it with something else that is wet like matte gel medium. So what I'm going to do now is take some of my strips and start gluing them over the top of this stamping. And I'm just, you know, sticking it down at the top and I'll pick up another strip and go over the top of it as well with more matte gel medium. So I'm just going to do one strip after another and fill in the space here. And while I'm doing that, I do want to discuss the scripture that we're working through today. And that is from 2 Corinthians 5 7 we walk by faith and not by sight and what what do i get 
from this scripture. When I meditate on this scripture, I really focus on the fact that our paths in life, our walk in life should be determined by the promises of God and not, you know, what our eyes can see or or what our other senses are perceiving because uh, many times what our senses perceive, perceive is not in line with what God has pro- what God has promised. And so often when I see this scripture, when I read it or, or meditate on it, I think about the promise made to Abraham and what kind of faith Abraham showed in believing that promise and walking in that promise. And before I get into that, what is happening on the screen is I had some silver paint that I used to just add another textural element um, and I stamped some more eyes and now I'm going to go over the top with another layer of strips and I'm going to trim it down and then this is the basis that I'm going to work on top of. It is super textural. There's a lot going on as far as what you can feel and see on the background of this journal spread and it, it all ties in right because I mean, every day there's a lot that we see and a lot that we feel. And this scripture reiterates to us that it is our faith that should be what's guiding us, what's moving us, what's, you know, spurring us into action and not everything that we're seeing or perceiving around us. Now, I would brought up the promise made to Abraham because that's what I think about when I when I read this scripture, because Abraham so showed such great faith that it is mind-boggling i mean look at what he must have seen around him and instead of paying attention to that and and following that he followed the word of god instead and his belief in that word was credited to him as righteousness but abraham was 75 years old when the promise of god was given to him and that promise involved him having a son and being made into a great nation being the father of many nations right so even at 75 years old he didn't receive that promise yet like he didn't have that kid right then and there it was another 25 years before his son Isaac was born so when you think about walking by faith and not by sight God instructed Abraham to leave his whole family at 75 years of age leave his you know where his father's family was from and travel somewhere else and start a whole new life based on this promise from him and that he would actually have a son and these things you know took place over the course of decades and still at 100 years of age when Abraham was told that his son he would actually have his son yes he kind of laughed like I'm 100 my wife is 90 years old and this is gonna happen like we're having this son and Even as crazy as that probably looked to him, he still did the things that God instructed him to do and demonstrated that he believed God's word over what he was seeing, over his perceptions of what things looked like and what was possible. So that's what I always get and think about when I read and meditate on this scripture and it's such a great reminder to always keep the promises of God at the forefront of what I am doing every day and not (laughs) pay attention to what's going on uh, in the crazy world and everything that that we see and that is thrown at us is is just static you know Um, the promises of God are do not change they are foundational they can be trusted and relied upon and that's just where I go to and what I get when I meditate on 2 Corinthians 5 7 so um, I hope that was helpful to you guys I'm almost finished up here on this page and I hope that you enjoyed this And if you did, please leave a like and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'm going to put on some music to finish this up, but thanks for joining me, you guys. Have a creative day. Bye-bye.